So we are going to do a hitchhiker's guide to the CNCF landscape. My name is Lori LaRusso, and I have a habit of putting my kid on my little profile slide with me. We were um, bumped to first class. She is quite bougie. No, that's not a mimosa, but she's trying. Um, so I'm head of community at Percona. I am a CNCF ambassador, so thank you, Katie, for getting me back in the program this year. I'm a CDF ambassador, and I work with the OpenSSF um, on their DevRel committee. You can find me, and please do, on that shall not be named, the first one, uh, LinkedIn. That's what the QR code goes to, and then I'm on Blue Sky as well. And I am Catherine Druckmann. I am an open source evangelist at Intel. I am also, what did I say I am? I am co-chair of the OpenSSF DevRel Committee and Marketing Advisory Council. I am also uh, currently taking the lead on the Open Platform for Enterprise AI Security Working Group. Love to have you join me there. And I am a recovering software engineer, is what I like to describe myself as. I used to live in an ID, and now I talk to humans. It's really cool. Um, yeah, so you can find me on the, the X thing, but also LinkedIn, Blue Sky, on the, the Fediverse. You can find me everywhere. And we're here to help. So I encourage you, actually, you know, after you've experienced today and learned all the things, reach out if you need help. That's what we're here for. Yeah, Catherine will be in her bubble in the Intel booth, and I mean, I've got purple hair, so come find me. Yeah, booth. We're, we're both really easy to find. Yeah. All right, so let's get this started. So what are we going to talk about today? So we're going to do a brief overview of the CNCF, uh, why the landscape is important, how to use the landscape, some awesome projects you don't know about, and what's next. So let's just do some level setting straight off. So the Linux Foundation uh, manages the CNCF. And as you can see, there are 900 open source projects within the Linux Foundation. And of that, we've got 3 million trained developers, 777,000 uh, developers contributing code, um, 70 events coming up, 17,000 organizations that are involved. But what does that mean for us in this room today? Well, what put the CNCF on the map? And I think George gave it away earlier, and it was Kubernetes. Right, so would we really need a landscape if Kubernetes was the only project of the CNCF? Now, how many of you work actively on Kubernetes? Raise your hand. Wow, that's awesome. But there are 208 of the 900 projects at the Linux Foundation, there are 208 projects housed at the CNCF. Now, how many of you work on those other projects? Right, okay, so it's Project Pavilion. I would have assumed more hands going up, more maintainers for any, other any projects. Maintainers? Any maintainers? Any maintainers? Thank, thank you. Okay, thank you. this is the right room. So we're gonna help you really navigate what we're gonna talk about, which is the CNCF landscape. So what is the CNCF landscape? So way, way back 100 years ago, <laughs> this is what the cloud native landscape used to, to look like. So this was a really fantastically organized uh, into nice little buckets of functionality. This was a, a view of all of the cloud native computing foundation projects at the time. Um, and this, you know, this did us all quite a, quite a nice little favor, right? Um, but over the years, this has grown massively. Another, another question, anyone looked at the current landscape and had your eyes kind of glaze over and go, oh my God, where could I possibly start? Or even like needed to zoom in to even see the icons? Anyone? Anyone find that very overwhelming and confusing? Excellent, that is why we're here. What about like when you can't figure something out and someone says, well, just go to the website. How many times has that happened to you and you just want to like strangle that person? Like go to the website? Well, this is why we maybe want to strangle that person because let's look at the CNCF landscape. How is that? I mean, everybody, let's give a round of applause to George for cleaning it up because you should have saw it before. You saw its first inception. There were many others in between. So, okay. I'm new to cloud native, I wanna get started, I wanna build something, I don't know what to use, and someone told me to go to the website and they're like, the CNCF landscape's where it's at. What the bleep am I supposed to do now? So this is crazy, right? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna show you some little tips and tricks on how to make this not so overwhelming and to really look at projects in a more in-depth way to determine if that's something that you wanna use with what you're building. We're going to dig deeper, to use a paleontology <laughs> reference. 
ta-da. Okay, so one of the things I think people like you forget about is that there's filters. So these, when we take the filter off, you're like, wait, I'm looking out there and I see vendors, I see some projects, I see a bunch of things and I'm not sure what. But we're just focusing on the projects at the CNCF. So the first thing we wanna do is just kick, click on CNCF projects. Now this is totally organized into tags, into licenses, are they open source, what type of license they have, what category they fall into, um, are they end user specific, what industry uses these sorts of projects, are they for-profit, non-profit projects that you're working on, what location is it located in, location is it located in, <laughs> that's fun. All right, so let's hit apply. All right, all of a sudden, wow, okay, that becomes a little bit cleaner. A little bit. A little bit cleaner. And then we're like, well, let's dig in more because there's different categories of projects within the CNCF. You've got archive projects, so projects that really tried but didn't quite make it. We all know that that happened. Then we've got graduated projects, projects that were sustainable and able to be on their own and hit a certain criteria within the CNCF to move to the next and final level. And are likely to be heavily used in production. Have you heard of Kubernetes? Um, <laughs> Then we've got incubating projects, right? So these are the projects that are trying to get to the next level. We've got more maintainers, more contributors, Pretty really trying stable, to figure probably, something out. Right? Right. Yeah, and then we've got sandbox. So these are the projects that just got into the CNCF. They're looking for an audience. They're trying to grow their code base. They're trying to grow their maintainers and contributors, and they're trying to solve that problem, but they need a lot of help from all of you. Which well, we'll get to later, by the way. So let's Quickly. dig in as to like what a project actually looks like. So let's go graduated and ooh, where did it go? Let's look at Istio. Which one? Istio. Istio. Where is Istio? Right there. Boom, okay. So let's dig into Istio. First off, you can see that it's a CNCF project. It's graduated. It's in the TAG network and it graduated in 2022, or I'm sorry, 2023. Here's the history of it. You can check out their GitHub, right? How many stars they have, how many contributors they have. This helps you kind of see what the, what's going on within the project uh, at, the, at the ground level. You can see what kind of languages. It's, so it's written 97% in Go. Um, you can see when it had its last security audit, how many of you are interested in security? Cool, how many Ooh. of you are forced to be interested in security, <laughs> right? Okay. Excellent. So, <laughs> excellent, <laughs> perfect. Um, and as we keep scrolling down, we learn more and more about the project. Um, but here's the thing that I think is really cool. And yes, it's called Clo Monitor, which, fun name. Um, so let's click in and let's see what that means. So this really dives into the health of the project, which is awesome. And so you can see it's got um, an overall score of 83. And then it breaks it down. It looks at the health of the repositories. It looks at the health of the community. Um, it kind of goes deeper, so if you're like, governance, what is that? Okay, they need some help there. Roadmap, they need to find their roadmap. Now start thinking about like, when you're working on something, what's important to you? You know, Is a de well-defined roadmap really gonna help you like say, yes, this is the project that we need to use because while we like it right now, we need to know that there's things going on in the future that are gonna help us get to the next level. They've got a security policy. Um, their website is great. And you just keep looking, keep looking, and then, do, 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 their license. As we're, as we're looking through this, I, I want to point out, um, anytime you see a score, right, a numerical score, I like to say that there's no right answer necessarily. I feel like we get too bogged down into what is a good and, good and not good enough score or number or numerical representation, whatever it may be. But I think it's, it's more complicated and nuanced than that, right? So when you're looking at these things, it gives you so much information that empowers you to make your own decisions. And another thing is if you are interested in security and this is a project you want to use and you see that, oh, they've got like a little red X on security, maybe that's something that we can then contribute back. Maybe yep. that's some, a way that we can help make this project get from red to green. Yeah, as George said, we are stronger together. Okay. Why can't I get out of this? Okay. Whoa. Uh, wow. What, what is happening? Let's go back to the landscape. Okay. So. So, what, okay, but like, what is happening with my landscape? That's, that's not helpful. I don't want graduated, I want all of it. Okay, apply. Sorry, technical all of it. difficulties. 
Okay, so here's something that's cool. As we're trying to talk with George and figure out how we're gonna make this fun and entertaining and exciting for you, we're like, what's something that would be really cool? I'm like, can we just like download all of the projects? Can we figure out how like, we can just get like a listing? Like, I don't mean to be like an Excel, Google spreadsheet kind of girl, but like sometimes that's helpful because as much as this is pretty to look at logos, my eyes are bleeding. Yep, yep. And, and we didn't know that that was a thing. And oh, look, it's a thing. It's a thing, y'all. I don't know who did that, but thanks. But I didn't know about this thing. And, and we've both been around a while. Yeah. So and I've been around a long time. Um, but it, I think the point we're making here is that no, no one here walks into this as an expert. And even after several years, you may still not know everything. So. And not to like keep harping on that security bandwagon, but what's really cool about this is that it's a listing of all of the projects. And then at very first glance, you can see when they did their last security audit, right? So if your company is a compliance-focused company, banks, we hope. insurance, all those things where this is super important, just at first glance, you can just sort it by when was the last time this, this project had a security audit, right? And that might knock that project off your grid right away. Or again, it might get you to be like, hey, what's going on with yeah, your... Take some ownership. <laughs> Contribute back. Okay. We have three minutes. Okay, so let's keep, oh, why would you use my computer? Okay. <laughs> I mean, come on, right? How many times have you been on a Zoom meeting and you accidentally shared the wrong screen? Yeah. All the time. All the time. Okay, you're going back to the presentation? Or you wanna talk about projects? Yeah, we can, we can blow through some projects. Let's talk about, uh, so the rest of the day, you're gonna learn about a lot of projects, right? Again, overwhelming, but as George said, come in, come out, uh, visit the, the project pavilion later, please do that, it's gonna be really fun. But um, there are always these kind of unsung heroes, things that fly under the radar that you may not hear about. You, you should be able to visit these again at the project pavilion, but we wanted to just go through a few kind of hidden ones. Some of them have very cool names. So here's one, it's called Trickster. Let's, let's, let's evaluate this project a little bit. It's a HTTP reverse proxy cache. You might find a need for that, right? But what's the status of this sandbox project? Where am I going? So this Look how many opportunities there are to jump in and help out with this fledgling project. Let's talk about another one. I would love to. Volcano. Volcano, cool name, right? What does it do? High performance. Who, 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 is here is who here is interested in that functionality? Anyone? Cool. Well, here's a project for you that you may not have learned about otherwise. So Shipwright. Shipwright is actually uh, a brand new incubating project for the CNCF, but it was at the CDF originally. And so times, sometimes that happens with projects. So they donate themselves to a foundation and then they realize they've reached their max at that foundation and they need more work. And it's more of a cloud native offering. So they went from CDF into the, CD, to, from CDF into the CNCF. And so it's a brand new project. It's got a lot of cool uh, maintainers that work on it, that work at Red Hat. Um, but again, it, it's about finding that home and finding that project that works best for you. Let's, let's Quickly shout out to Parsec for being uh, one of my favorite games on my TI-99 4A as a child. Um, and skip ahead to some, something called Helm. Anybody heard of Helm? Pretty popular project, widely used. Uh, Helm is a project that is near and dear to my heart because it was, uh, it, it was something that I used day to day when I was first getting into working in this space, working on cloud native technologies. Helm is a fantastic project. It's established, right? This is a graduated project, widely used by a lot of us, practically ubiquitous at this point. But Helm is also a project that is actively seeking contributors. So this is a fantastic opportunity to jump in. I like to tell people always that open source projects are a fantastic way not only to learn, hone your skills, learn, meet mentors, mentors that will guide you through your career, and it's a really great name, frankly, to make a name for yourself in the technology space. So I would encourage you, if, if you are a, a casual user of Helm, if Helm pops up in your day-to-day -day life, jump in and find opportunities where you can give back to that community because we all rely so heavily on it. So okay, we've learned about projects and you're gonna learn about so many more today. And again, we've, we've shown you a little bit about how you might dig deeper, go further, 
down the rabbit hole that is whatever project uh, strikes your fancy at any given time. But so what, what do you do now? You've learned about all these great new projects. Um, how do you know if you're using the right tools? I think this is, this is why we're all here, right, at this event. We're here to communicate, talk to each other, learn best practices, go to sessions, meet people, meet people in the hall, do all of that, right? Okay, but like as much technical fun as we're having, let's uh, forget about like why KubeCon is an awesome conference, is that it gives us all these other opportunities and Sorry, I don't know, whatever, slideshow. It gives us all these other opportunities to meet people. So like George said, you can go down to the project pavilion, take a tour, right? Have somebody walk you around the projects that maybe we just mentioned or projects we didn't mention. But don't forget, like, take care of yourself while you're here. Go get a chair massage. Go to the oxygen bar. Um, there's a run on Wednesday morning and Friday morning. Hopefully it won't be snowing either of those days. But my favorite is the pet a pup. How many of you have pets at home? How many of you love showing pictures of your pets to other people because they're your babies, right? Okay, so imagine this, you go to pet a pup, you're talking like completely like chill about these cool puppies, you show your puppies off, then you start networking about like a project you're working on or a problem that you have, and there you go. So take all of the opportunities that KubeCon gives you, whether they're technical, non-technical, project pavilion tour, lightning talks, whatever, and make the most out of your time here. George is a great resource, Catherine and I, we're here, we're to, here help. to help. Oh, it's a fun podcast. Anyways, so y'all enjoy the rest of your day and welcome to KubeCon. Wave to me in my podcast fishbowl. <laughs>